Ahoim Shikni. In this video, I'm going to do a brief Czech citizenship update. Um, I feel like I've been going through this process all year, but I haven't really shared it with you. And I thought maybe some of you are interested in the process or maybe applying yourself. And I thought you could benefit from hearing more about my journey. So back in February, I believe, I took the Realia test, which is in the Czech language, and it's a multiple choice test of 30 questions about Czech culture, Czech history, Czech geography, and they publish the questions online. There are 300 possible questions. So all you have to do is memorize 300 questions in Czech, and you should be fine. There were some new questions on there that we hadn't downloaded, so I kind of had to, to guess on those. Um, and I did guess one incorrectly, so I want to see if any of you non-Czechs can get it. So I'll put it in English. Czechia is located in the main European watershed. Water flows from rivers in Czechia to three seas. Into which sea does the river Elbe flow? To the Black Sea, to the North Sea, to the Baltic Sea, to the Adriatic Sea. First of all, I have no idea. Secondly, I have no idea where some of these seas are. They didn't show us a map, we just had to guess. I was fairly certain it wasn't the Adriatic. If you're a Czech citizen and you didn't know the answer, tell me in the comments below to make me feel better. This brings me to the language test. I have now postponed the language test twice out of just plain fear. First of all, it costs over 5,000 crowns to take and you don't get a refund when you fail. And I just don't want to waste 5,000 crowns on a failed exam. Secondly, on the day that I took the Realia test, there was a lovely woman who um, checked me in and she knew me from this channel and she had seen my Czech speaking videos and I think she assumed that I was more fluent than I am. So she started speaking to me in Czech at a fairly rapid pace and I just froze. Like I couldn't understand anything she was saying. It was like beep and I just started to feel like a fraud. Like, here I am, actually trying to speak Czech on the internet like a fool, and I'm not even gonna pass this intermediate level test. So I went home and I immediately postponed my language test. And then I just kind of found every excuse not to study. I mentioned in one of my videos how I love italki, so I decided to use italki to learn some French. And I even bought a beginner's course in German. Basically, I was purposely derailing my Czech studies by learning other languages. That's how scared I was to take the test. Finally, Hansa just sat me down and said, look, who cares if you fail? You need a goal. You need like a deadline on the calendar to get started again. And so I registered for the B1 test at the end of the year and I'm now cramming for it. So here's how the language test breaks down. And here's how I'm trying to conquer each part. The reading comprehension is like a typical SAT reading comprehension test with multiple choice answers. What I find to be most important in reading comprehension is a strong vocabulary because if the entire text is about some word that you don't know and it's repeated throughout, you're cooked. One time my car broke down here in Prague and I had to call the tow truck um, company and the operator kept asking about my vozidlo and I started to freak out like vozidlo, vozidlo, like do I have a vozidlo? Like what the hell is that? And that word means vehicle and I don't know why she didn't just use auto but she didn't. So yeah, a wide vocabulary is pretty crucial in reading comprehension. The only way to study this is by basically carding every word or phrase that I encounter that is new. I put it in a flashcard app like Anki, and then I study like 200 cards a day as soon as I wake up. These words will be mine. So the first part of the writing exam is a 75 word review. Um, we have to write about some hypothetical product or service and we have to review it. 
One example was that I hired a travel agency for a vacation and I have to now write a review about what I liked, what I didn't like, if I was satisfied, how I was dissatisfied, etc. Which I feel is just so very Czech. Like of all the things I need to know how to do in this country, it's to express my displeasure with your services. What might be more relevant to us immigrants is let's say writing an email to your landlord with a list of things that have like broken or stopped working in your flat or maybe writing an email to your dog's vet describing his symptoms to see if he needs to come in for an appointment but hey i'm getting pretty good at describing my dissatisfaction with services in this country so i'll definitely be checked soon side note on emails with czech people Whenever I'm dealing with like a plumber or an electrician or a plumber, so many plumbers, I always ask them to write me instead of calling, like SMS, fine, email, because at least then with an email or an SMS, I can take time to translate it, to understand, and take the time to respond correctly but they always insist on calling and speaking at like twice the speed of a normal person. And then there's so much room for miscommunication. And then a Czech friend told me that a lot of Czechs don't wanna write emails because the Czech language is so difficult that it's too easy to make grammatical mistakes. And with speaking, they can just use Hovorové uh, Česky, like um, colloquial Czech, and so there's not any documentation of mistakes, um, and they can kind of speak informally. Now imagine the insanity of me trying to learn a language that the native speakers don't even want to put in writing. The second writing part is to write 100 words to a friend on a topic. Um, for example, television is better than books and I'm supposed to articulate my opinion on that topic. Again, with the opinions. Are you starting to get a peek into the Czech character? Listening is the part of the exam that I feel like so sistane, to sistane, meaning like whatever happens, happens. I'm doing some practice exams, I'm listening to Czech podcasts, and trying to like listen to Czech YouTube, but I don't feel like listening is something you can cram. Like you really just have to constantly be hearing the Czech language. I'm a little concerned about the actual audio equipment um, at the test and it being so old that I won't be able to hear properly. When I, when I took the A1 exam, the proctor used this like old cheap CD player and the CD kept like skipping and the speakers were kind of muted. So it was really hard to make out like what the person was saying. Hansa says I'm partly deaf anyway, um, but I think he just means deaf in that like endearingly wifey deaf way where I only hear two thirds of what he says. So the speaking segment has three parts. For the first and second part, you speak alone with the proctor. And for the third part, you're paired with another candidate. In the first part, we must introduce ourselves and speak about our you know, basic things like our hobbies, our families. They'll ask follow-up questions like, what do you do on the weekends? Um, do you play any sports? And so to practice for this, I've been creating these one minute shorts that I post to YouTube and to Instagram, where I just like ask myself a, a question on the topic and then I just speak as much as I can about that topic. So I think the way to practice for this is look at their list of topics and then just like get your vocabulary pretty good so that you know, like you can put together sentences comfortably on a topic. In the second part, the candidate is shown photos, um, let's say of a tennis player and a football player, and asks you which sport do you prefer and why. Um, I don't know why the photos are necessary. Or maybe like a fancy restaurant and a McDonald's, and which type of meal do you prefer and why? And you have to speak for like two to three minutes on that topic, so again, I feel like the best way to practice is to just get some phrases together, like mamrachi, or um, you know, I prefer this, and then like protoje, blah, blah, blah. Like, why do you prefer that? And then just hope that the topic, sports, dining, whatever, is something that you have enough vocabulary in. 
Finally, we've come to the swimming from the shark portion of the exam. Meaning, you don't have to swim faster than the shark, you just have to swim faster than the dude swimming next to you. This is where we speak with another candidate. So the problem for me personally is that from what I've seen, um, the majority of the people applying for citizenship were Ukrainian or Russian or from a similar Slavic language background with the exception of um, some Vietnamese people. Um, and when they speak Czech, it's really hard for me to understand them. They speak really fast and with sort of like a, an Eastern European accent and English speakers have a really hard time understanding that. Um, as a case in point, if you're a native English speaker and you're learning Czech and you've seen any of my videos, you've probably said like, oh my God, I can understand this girl. That's because you and I are both making the same English speaker mistakes and we both have the same bad pronunciation. Um, so it's just a lot harder to understand a Russian learner of Czech than a, an American learner of Czech for me. So I really fear getting paired with a native Slavic language speaker because one, I can't understand their accent and two, their native language is already closer to Czech, leaving me to get eaten by the shark. So that's the state of affairs over here in the Dream Prague household. Basically me cramming as much check into my brain as I can before the exam at the end of the year. Because of that, I'll be posting videos within a regular schedule. So be sure to subscribe and hit the bell because if you don't hit the bell, the algorithm will forget that you liked my videos in the first place and they won't show you when my new videos come out. Um, I will be posting short Czech language videos on shorts and on Instagram. So please take a peek at those and I happily welcome any of your corrections or suggestions to my Czech speaking ability. Oh, and real quick before I go, I want to thank everyone who's purchased a Dream Prague t-shirt. You help pay for subtitles, false eyelashes, stuff nutria, and help keep the lights on around here. If you'd like to get your own Dream Prog t-shirt and help support the channel, go to dreamprog.com slash shop. Tak, uvidíme se příště. Ahoj.